Okay, so this is going to be a very brief video to just give you a tour of Amazon Web Services. So as we talked about cloud computing, uh, we talked around some of the different styles of cloud computing. Uh, we talked about Amazon Web Services. Amazon Web Services was created by Amazon about 10, 11 years ago. And uh, it came out of the, part of this, it came out of the fact that Amazon, if you think of Amazon as an as an as a computer operation has, you know, massive um, compute operations and centers to run its business. So, you know, when you log on, you know, there's a there's underlying, um, you know, the Amazon website is a whole bunch of technical infrastructure. So what Amazon did was actually build upon what they had built for their sales operation and converted it or adapted it to also provide a, um, infrastructure on demand or as we call um, infrastructure as a service okay so um, where you would find this at if you click to aws.amazon.com it'll take you to AWS all right so you can uh, log in so basically all you need is your Amazon account same way you, you can use to buy stuff with will also get you into uh, AWS. Okay, so here's kind of the home, this is the home page. Um, you have a whole bunch of stuff in here. I mean, this, this is a very big. Um, site with a whole bunch of different capabilities so here is a services so if you take a look at the list of what services they provide all right so you have compute services so ec2 is really what mo a lot of organizations run so ec2 is your uh compute services so computers so basically you would create computers out for this uh but you see a lot of other types of Technology. So this is all stuff that Amazon has created um, that organizations can use. So you've got compute, storage, which is like disk space uh, of different types. Databases, a whole bunch of different databases. So you have a core relational database service. We'll be talking more about that. But you've also got some other uh, functions in here, some capabilities around migration capabilities around networking, um, development. So when we talked around, you know, this, you know, AWS was originally founded as infrastructure as a service. Remember we talked about that, there's another tier called platform as a service. So the idea is if you take infrastructure as a service and you add development and development tools and things like that, it really becomes what we call platform as a service. All right, so if you would take, for example, your compute and storage, all right, that would be infrastructure as a service. However, if you start developing applications using databases, using development tools, basically what we have here, what we're showing here, um, what you'll end up with is basically you'll be running AWS as platform as a service. So you can see a lot of, you know, as I said, a lot of capability, a lot of management tools, monitoring, um, media, machine learning. So there's a big emphasis on AWS has really been on providing capability for being able to do work with very large data sets, massive data sets. So you know, things like machine learning, or artificial intelligence as it were, um, analytics, you know, are both capabilities, kind of, uh, functional, applica uh, functional applications that people or organizations are using. Uh, you see some other newer stuff out here, things like, for example, Internet of Things, um, some other you know business productivity. So they're adapting Alexa for business, sort of a voice a, a voice interaction, application integration. So these are the types of things you would use if you were doing platform as a service, as opposed to just simply AWS as applications as a service. So took real quick at um, EC2. 
which is their servers, basically compute as a service. And what you'll see here is your service network. You have different, a whole bunch of zones. So what, what they have done, what um, Amazon has done is a, a whole bunch of different uh, data centers distributed around the planet. So you can see here we have a uh, Asia Pacific availability zones, you know, so Northeast, which I believe is down in Virginia. Um, you know, the idea of, you know, the advantages of, of a cloud is that, you know, you have a large distributed operation so that if you have a problem in, in one area, you can shift workload dynamically over to other places. And so they have, I'm trying to think of the number of data centers. They have a lot of data centers. Um, resources that are, uh, you know, that I would, I would be running. I'm only, I only have one. I think I have one volume set right now. Different settings. So this is, if you can think of it, this is all the functionality and all the capabilities you would um, have seen or would see in a data center, but available across the internet in a cloud. And so if I want to create a instance, let's say a launch instance from a template. Our, no. Um, it was the one I was looking for. This is the machine I'm, I have right now. So I have one instance on uh, my machine right now or that, that's running in the cloud. Um, this AMIs, images. So what they've, what's happened over the years is different companies have different organizations, AWS and other organizations have uh, built what they call AMIs, which are images. All right, so the AWS marketplace is a place where people have created different types of prepackaged solutions that are you know, that you can connect into. All right, so a bunch of different. So here's software as a service products. So um, Ubuntu, which is a uh, a Linux variant, different third party. These, these are different software products which are deployed on um, on AWS. You see, this is lots and lots and lots of functionality, lots and lots of different applications. This has really grown into a significant um, platform. As I said, companies like, for example, um, Netflix run all of their operations, all the stuff that runs, all the video distributions is run, has been migrated into um, AWS. So what I'm looking at right here is there are, looking at different types of operating systems, like machines with different types of operating systems, with different with, with different plans. All right, so, um, so we have 200, 236 basically pre-built machines um, that you can just connect into and fire up. All right. So CentOS, which is a, a lot of this stuff is Linux, because what happens is these machines are all um, emulation. They're they're Intel-based virtual machines. All right. So anything that can run on an Intel machine, uh, which is primarily Windows and Linux, uh, can be created. But what's happened is you've got larger and larger. You know, footprints of Intel as a as a standard platform. So you know, it's you know, pretty much everything is is uh, you know I won't say everything, but you know what you've seen is most most a lot of organizations now have just simply have converted their all their technical infrastructure from proprietary proprietary systems like for example 
like IBM or IBM AIX, which is a type of Linux or, or Solaris, to uh, Linux, which is a uh, looks will look like will operate like a Unix type system, but is in actuality a you know a, a different operating system capable of being run on an Intel machine. You see here, you might be a 32-bit versus 64-bit, 60, different regions. So you've got Northern California, Oregon, uh, a government cloud uh, set up. You have different instance types. So you have this micro instances, which are free tier. So you can run some stuff just to kind of experiment with um, general purpose machines, small, medium, large, extra large, two times extra large, so six times, 16 times extra large. So it's, you think of this as, you know, you, you, you can establish a system based upon the size of the like t-shirts <laughs> you know, so, so small medium large extra large two times extra large all right so you've got a as you said there's like there's a lot in this and you're seeing more and more organizations are actually looking to platforms like aws and microsoft ha microsoft has a counterpart to this which is called um, azure all right but it works or kind of the same way, you know, it's a virtual machines um, can be accessed across the internet, can be dynamically established, and you pay basically for what you use. All right. So that's a real brief tour of AWS. I want to give you a kind of a view of it and some of the functionality that's in it. All right.